Hello, my name is Otto and welcome to the channel. This video is a tutorial on how to use the DJI Pocket 2. I made a video about it over a year ago, but ever since, there has been a few updates. So I thought that it would be a good idea to just make an updated 2022 version. When you take the Pocket 2 out of the box, this small cap is going to be attached at the bottom of the device. On the box, you will find this other cap that has a quarter inch thread hull that allows you to use the Pocket 2 on a tripod or with an extension stick. I do recommend removing this one and attach the one with a quarter inch thread hull. Use a power adapter with a supplied USB-C cable to charge the Pocket 2. Just insert the cable on the USB-C port underneath. When the battery is charging, a green light will be flashing quickly and it will turn off when it's done. To insert a memory card, go to the left side of the camera. Insert the card with the contacts facing the back of the camera and push it all the way in until it clicks. The Pocket 2 will support micro SD cards up to 256 gigabytes. To remove the memory card, you need to push it like this and then pull it away. On your smartphone, you will need to download the DJI Memo app. On the iPhone, use the App Store. And on Android, you need to download the app directly from the DJI website. On the Pocket 2, remove this cover by pushing it to the left side. And now, select the correct plug for your smartphone and insert it on the Pocket 2 like this. Turn the Pocket 2 on by pressing this button on the right side for 2 seconds. And now connect your smartphone to the Pocket 2 like this. Open the app and follow the indications to register your new device and install any firmware update available. You can use the Pocket 2 connected to your smartphone and this is going to give you access to a bigger screen and you can access the menus and all the options available for the camera. But for now, we're going to remove it and focus on the Pocket 2 itself. This is a joystick attachment and we're going to plug it into the camera. There are two ways to turn on the Pocket 2. If you use a power button, the camera will start on selfie mode. If you want the camera to point forward when you turn it on, you need to press the function button down here for about 2 seconds. To turn off the Pocket 2, you need to use the power button. Press and hold it for about 1 second until it turns off. And don't forget to place your Pocket 2 inside the case. We can use the joystick to control the gimbal movement or to zoom in and zoom out. To change the joystick mode, you need to double press the button next to the joystick. And on the screen, you can see this icon indicating how the joystick will behave. If you set it to control the gimbal movement, it can go up, down, left, or right. If you set it to control the zoom, push the joystick up to zoom in and push it down to zoom out. If you use the joystick to control the movement, you can zoom in and out by using this slider on the screen. You have to press the slider and swipe your finger up or down. If you use the joystick to control the zoom, the slider on the screen can make the gimbal tilt up or down. My personal preference is to set the joystick to move the gimbal around. The red button to the left is the record button and it will start recording if you are on video mode or it will take a picture if you are on photo mode. If you are shooting a video, pressing the record button will stop the recording. But you can also long press the same button to pause the recording, which is very useful to make internal cuts on the same video clip and on the screen, you get two options to finish or to keep recording. This button here is the function button. If you press it once, it will switch between photo and video mode. Pressing it twice will recenter the camera. And if you press it three times, the gimbal will turn around to selfie mode or to face straight forward. The button next to the joystick is going to let you select the gimbal mode. On follow mode, the Pocket 2 can pan left and right and also tilt up and down. On tilt locked, the Pocket 2 can pan left and right, but it will not tilt up or down. On FPV, the Pocket 2 will move like the follow mode, 
but the row axis is not going to be locked so it can move like this. We also have lock mode which locks all the axes so the gimbal keeps pointing at the same direction no matter how we move the pocket to. There are two ways to activate lock mode. One is by pressing the gimbal mode button for about one second and the pocket 2 will stay on lock mode until you press the same button again. The other way is by holding the function button as long as you need to and when you release it, it will go back to the previous mode that you had. On the main screen, swiping to the right will give you access to the pictures or videos that you have taken and swiping to the right again will let you delete them or mark them as favorites. To go back to the previous screen, you can press this button or you can swipe on the opposite way. Swiping up will show you these four options. Up here, you can press this one to recenter the gimbal. This one is to flip the camera around and this one is to change the gimbal mode. You can use all these features with the buttons like I showed you before or with this menu. The last option is to select the speed of the gimbal when you move it around. So options are fast, and slow, but I usually like to set this to slow. To activate active tracking, double tap on the screen on the subject you want to track. To quit active tracking, just press anywhere on the screen. Swiping to the left will let you select the different camera modes available. At the top, we have a story mode, which is a set of preset movements that you can use. But honestly, I feel that using a story mode with a smartphone is easier and more fun to use. Now here we have panorama shots. And swiping to the left again will open this soup menu where you can select 3x3 or 180 degree panorama shots. On the right side, we can set a timer. On photo mode, you can select between 16x9 or 4x3 aspect ratio and a timer for 3, 5 or 7 seconds. I recommend using the 4x3 aspect ratio for pictures. On video mode, you can select the resolution between 1080p, 2.7K or 4K. On the right side, you can select the frames per second and I recommend using 24 frames per second for vlogging or general videos and 60 frames per second if you're going to slow down your video clip on post. HDR video stands for high dynamic range which will give you more details on the shadows but it only works at 1080p or 2.7K. It has a heavy crop and I recommend just using the regular video mode anyway. Slow motion will only work at 1080p and you can select four or eight times the slow motion speed. On the last camera mode, you can select time-lapse, motion-lapse or hyperlapse, and each of them is going to have their own submenu. On time-lapse, you need to select the interval, which is how often it will take a shot. Here you can select the duration, which is how long the camera will be doing the time lapse, and this arrow down here indicates the total time of the final clip. Regular time lapses will not have any kind of movement. Motion lapse will add movement to the time lapse, and you can select the camera to move from left to right, from right to left, or you can select a custom path. Go to the next submenu, which is the same as the one for the time lapse, and select the settings that you need. When you go back to the main screen, select the path by moving the camera with the joystick and press this dot on the screen to select point A and then point B. The last option that we have is hyperlapse and here you're going to select the resolution and the speed of the hyperlapse. If you need to shoot in vertical mode, you can flip the pocket tool on a horizontal position just like this. Swiping down will allow you to access different settings. All the way to the left, this one lets you select the joystick mode for gimbal control or zoom control. The next one is to go into the settings and this option will let you format your micro SD card. This one will activate face tracking automatically when you use the Pocket 2 on selfie mode. And inside the accessories tab, you can set up the joystick speed by selecting how fast it will move the gimbal or how fast it will zoom in and out. On the main settings screen, you can swipe to the left. And here you can calibrate the gimbal, select the anti-flicker, select to have sounds on or off, and here you can select your language. Now here we have um, Glamour Effects, 
but this is only going to work on videos at 1080p at 24 or 30 frames per second. The next one is video quality and I recommend selecting battery saver because there doesn't seem to be a big difference if you use high quality. And the last option here is to activate the pro settings. Once you activate this, on the main screen you need to press the pro icon. And inside the exposure tab, you can select the shutter speed and the ISO. Here you can select the white balance and you can also select a normal color profile or a flat color profile. This icon over here is going to let you select the autofocus mode from continuous to single. Swiping to the left is going to be page number two and here you have access to different audio options, but I normally don't change any of this. For time lapses, the pro settings will also let you select if you want to shoot in JPEG or RAW in addition to the time lapse video. And you can also select different frame rates down here. I hope that this video was useful and I hope that you enjoy using your new DJI Pocket 2. I do have a few more videos on my channel explaining how to make great videos with this so make sure to check them out. It's time to say goodbye, so I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll see you around, maybe in the next one. Bye.